how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2013 Ford Chassis Holiday Rambler. This Holiday Rambler has a vibration. So in order to try to fix this vibration, the shop has replaced both front tires and balanced them and balanced all four of the rear tires. The vibration is much better, but we still have a light vibration on this vehicle. So we need to figure out where the vibration is being emitted from on this car. In order to do that, we're going to use ATS's Intelligent Vibration Analyzer, the IVA. This kit is going to make this a really simple job. What we need to do is let's take a look at the kit and then let's get it installed on this RV. To find the vibration on this Holiday Rambler, we're going to use the IVA. The IVA has a control unit and this is the VCI. So this is going to plug into the DLC, the Diagnostic Link Connector, on this Ford system. We're going to read the data from the engine control unit, which will give me the speed and the RPM. And then we're going to take the vibration sensors and we're going to plug them into this. So this is an oscilloscope or an ADC reads this and then transmits this to your computer over a USB cable. Each one of these is a vibration sensor, but these are far different than anything else that's been made. This is a smart sensor. That means that this sensor can be orientated in any direction and we read XYZ signals from the accelerometer. That means that no matter which way it's moving, I'll read all three axes with one cable into my unit and we'll be able to tell from this vibrating where the vibration is originating. Originating. This will go on the left front, right front, left rear, right rear. These are positioned very close to the wheel assembly on the axles or on the suspension unit and as the suspension moves up and down we pick up the vibration. We then triangulate this data and we can find which drive shaft, whether the engine, transmission, or a wheel assembly is where the vibration is being emitted from. We also also have a full system for microphones. This is a smart clamp to where this is a actual uh, microphone inside the clamp. This goes on to metal and I read the sound through metal. If I want to read the sound through air, this is an air microphone. And these are clamps that would go on so that we can attach the magnetic assemblies. There is a magnet on this and they're very strong. They're 50 pound magnets. So these aren't going to fall off. If you have aluminum arms, you use these magnets to install the system with. So now that we've taken a look at this, let's go ahead and get it set up on this Holiday Rambler. On these cables, when we stretch them into the vehicle, whatever kind of vehicle it is, we want to use this tape. So I can tape the cable down on the outside of the vehicle, and this tape is residue free, and it will peel right off. So once we've stuck it, it'll come off. But for your test drives, this will ensure the cable routing is done properly. We have the VCI in the ADC interface and it's plugged into the vehicle. So now we're powering it. We get the power to, for this unit off of the DLC on pin 16. We then have brought in all of our accelerometer cables. So we always put yellow to yellow, red to red, green to green, and blue to blue. So the yellow, that is the left front. Always ensure that when you are putting on your accelerometers, make sure that they're on the right corner of the suspension. That way we'll, we will ensure that we're finding the correct location of that vibration. Now that we've got the VCI set up, we need to set up the computer so we know what tire sizes, rear ends, and everything else that this vehicle would have so we can go for a test drive and find this vibration. So let's get this computer set up. Now that we have the Intelligent Vibration Analyzer, the IVA, installed on this RV, the IVA program needs some information so it can properly diagnose and test this RV. 
So let's take a look at the program and see what we need to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go look at all the tires on the vehicle. On this vehicle, the front has one size tire and the rear has another. So on the front, we have a 245-75-22.5. Now the machine rounds this to 23, which gives me a 117.71. That's the circumference of the tire. If I know the vehicle speed and I know the circumference, I can figure out, calculate mathematically, how many times that tire rotated in each second. That, that will be converted into hertz, rotations per second. That will give us a reading so we can figure out where the vibration is emitting. The rear tire is a 235.80, 22.5 rounding up to 23, it's a 118.76. Always make sure that the tires are properly identified and entered into the program. It's very important. Now we need to set up the drive type. This isn't a front wheel drive, it's a rear wheel. We're using four sensors and we're going to use it on the wheel and suspension as we've already seen. We've connected these to each component close to the tire on the suspension for that corner. We go to the ring and pinion and we can select this guy from a list and we can see there's quite a list but what I'm not sure is if this has like a 456 or a 538 or a 571 I'm just not sure since I'm not sure it's really easy the IVA gives you a, a button right here and we can push this and we're going to auto find that ratio so what we want to do to auto find is we want to drive down the highway and we need to be on a highway because you're going to be going 60 miles an hour where it's safe to do this when you obtain 60 miles an hour be very light in the gas so I'm in high gear I want to be in the highest gear and I want to cruise at 60 and this will turn green as you'll see and then we'll be there for 10 seconds and the there's a calculation, a mathematical calculation that will figure out what that ring and pinion ratio is for me and it will automatically enter it and then we can proceed with the testing and the testing will be accurate. So if we had a driveline vibration, we could find that and we want to be accurate. So if you don't know it, just let the machine figure it out for you. So now what we need to do is get out on a highway and get up to 60 miles an hour so we can find this RV's vibration. Okay, so we're out on the highway now, and I've just started to go the speed where we're going to be able to figure the calculate the ring and pinion. I want to be in the throttle really easy so I'm in my highest gear. It's calculated, it's a 571, so now we want to run the test. Go ahead and answer this that we're okay. I can feel it got a vibration right now and it's coming from the left front. We can see that it's yellow. So this is just a real light vibration and it's on the left front. It's also indicated right down here on the tire. And when we go over here to details, here it gives us the overall times and it tells us which tire this is a special program so we can indicate your tire problem. This is first order, second order, third order, fourth order. We can see it's a first order problem. So it's just a tire and it's something's wrong with the tire, the balance. We have to go back to the shop and we're going to have to figure it out. Again, you can see that it's indicated down here and it's telling you which tire it is on this diagram. And if it was the rear drive shaft, it would show the shaft or the wheels. And always be aware that this is a solid front axle like this one is. And sometimes the vibration can start moving from side to side or around the vehicle. And that's why you really want to look at the detail. That's a really sophisticated algorithm that's figuring out which tire it is. Like you can see that this, this other tire, the right front is also lit but we're saying that the problem is on the left, not the right. So what we need to do now is we're going to head back to the shop and we need to test the tire. We need to get it off and balance it, see what's going on with the tire so we can get this uh, RV fixed. We'll see you at the shop. 
Now that we know the left front tire is our problem, the driver's side, as it was indicated on the IVA, we want to go ahead and lift the front of this vehicle up. So we're just going to use the automated system here and it will make it uh, way easier for us to do that. Now that the intelligent vibration analyzer has told us that this driver's side front tire is the problem, before I ever take it off, I need to check to make sure that it's centered and it's round. When you center a wheel, these either have a centering structure inside here or I center off of my lugs. Different wheels will do different effects. So if this didn't center correctly, I would get a light vibration and I could, I could balance this tire multiple times and it still won't fix it. So I just want to see if this thing is centered. We want to make sure that the tire is round. So what I'm going to do to do this is we're going to take a dial indicator and we're going to set up this dial indicator on the wheel. Now on this wheel I have a smooth center area. So if I have a smooth center area, I'm okay. But if I don't, take masking tape and roll two rolls all the way around the tire of the masking tape. Then put the dial indicator on top of the masking tape and then roll it and that will give me a smooth surface so I can see if I have a problem. So now is what we want to do is we want to watch the dial indicator as we roll this tire around. Now that's way, way too much guys, I can already tell you. That tire is absolutely out of round. Yeah, okay, so we have a problem where the tire is not, is not round. Now either the tire's not round or the rim isn't centered. So the next thing I want to do is I want to move the dial indicator out to this outer edge and we want to get a check there. So let me set that up and let's do that test. So now we've moved the dial indicator so we can measure the outer circumference of the rim. The reason that we're doing this, again, is because this rim can be centered by either a centering mechanism on the hub or the lugs can center it. If for some reason the rim is off or the centering mechanism doesn't work, this will go up and down and then the rim is the problem or the centering mechanism is the problem and it's not the tire. So this is a real easy test. I'm on the outside of the diameter. Let's roll this guy around and we can clearly see that this isn't even close to what we had. The tire was over a hundred thousandths in movement out. So that's not what's wrong. The rim is centered. So the rim is okay. So the rim is centered and the rim is okay. The tire is what's wrong. This brand new tire is out of round. So what we're going to need to do is get this tire off and take it back to uh, the place that sold it and we need to get a warranty and we need a new tire because this one isn't round and it's giving a real light vibration to this vehicle. So let me get this uh, tire off, we'll get it replaced and then we'll get it back on and we'll go for a test drive to make sure that our vibration is gone. We've had the tire replaced, so we have a brand new tire on this, and the tire is round and it's balanced. So now what I want to do is I want to show you the run out, what you should have on a, a brand new tire or a used tire. They got to be pretty round. So let's go ahead and take a look at the dial indicator. Now before when we looked at that, we could see that we had over a hundred thousandths run out. Now you're saying that you just don't have that. And this tire being round and being balanced shouldn't produce a vibration. We can see that we have a pretty good run out on that tire. So that's what you're expecting. So that's what I want to see when I have a, a new tire, I'm checking a used tire. You can't have a hundred thousand, so you're going to have a vibration in the vehicle. So now we've got this tire on here and I know it's round. Let's go drive this car and take it for a test drive. Let's make sure that the vibration is gone. Okay guys, we're back out on our second test drive. The left front wheel has been replaced. 
the vehicle doesn't have any vibrations it's smooth so let's look at the data we can see the data coming off of the wheels um, we have low readings all the way around notice how this was in the hundreds before on the top right notice that they're right around 50 60 40s it just shows that we don't have a vibration of any significance nothing that the machine can pick up and I can't feel a vibration right now so this vehicle is done it's ready to return to the customer so let's go ahead and go back to the shop we're just off of our test drive and as you can see this RV is fixed there's no vibration so the left front wheel was the problem we've corrected that problem the RV was test driven again there's no vibration this vehicle is ready to return to the customer what I want to express is when you have a vibration issue whether it's the brakes vibrating the wheels the brake rotors causing the vibration or drums a prop shaft a gear vibration the only way to do this is with sophisticated diagnostics that means where I can actually determine where the vibration is coming from I mean I got six tires on this vehicle I don't want to look at all six tires I want to look at the problem tire once I can zero in on the problem then I can fix this vehicle quickly and accurately. If you follow the procedures that I've shown you in this video, you too will have good troubleshooting in your base.